Before we get into our second lesson about the jet stream, I want to review a couple of things from our first lesson and build off of them for this jet stream lesson. Okay, so last time you might remember that we talked about high and low pressure. High pressure brings happy weather, low pressure brings lousy weather. That's the easy way you can remember it. The other thing we need to know about high and low pressure is that the difference between the two creates wind. That's right, the wind you feel is generated by the difference between high and low pressure. Here's the thing, nature hates when things are out of balance. It wants everything to be equal all over the globe. Of course, you and I both know that will never happen. The temperature in Antarctica will never be the same as at the equator. The pressure will also never be the same in every place around the world. The difference in these variables is what creates our weather. So the difference in pressure specifically is what generates the wind. Basically, there's a surplus of air. There's a lot of it around high pressure. And nature wants to move some of that surplus into the deficit around the low pressure. It makes sense, right? If you have two buckets of water, nature works the same way. The water's gonna overflow out of the first bucket and move into a bucket next to it that doesn't have as much in it. Again, it wants things to be equal. So the wind goes out of high pressure towards low pressure, this is at the surface, and it flows clockwise around an area of high pressure in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise around low pressure in the northern hemisphere. That's where we live in New England, of course. So that's how wind works at the surface. Think about a nor'easter, right? It gets really, really windy at the coastline. Why is that? Because you have a really intense area of low pressure. The stronger the storm, or the area of high pressure, the stronger the wind. If you have a really weak area of high and low pressure, the wind will also be weak. That's how we get wind where we live. But there's also wind way high in the atmosphere. We're talking 20, 30,000 feet in the sky. That's the jet stream. The jet stream is basically a fast moving river of air and it drives storms, in our case, across the country towards New England. Now, it will ebb and it flows. It moves around basically, but it's the storm track. This very fast moving ribbon of air, way high in the sky, is somewhere you've actually been, believe it or not. If you've been on an airplane, you've been in the jet stream. The storms obviously follow the jet stream, but so too do airplanes in some cases. So think about it. The jet stream flows from west to east. It separates cold air to the north and warm air to the south. Temperatures will change as the storm track changes. Now why would a plane be in a jet stream? Might sound like something that's kind of weird, but it actually works to our advantage. When a pilot is flying from California, for example, to Boston, if you fly with the jet stream, you have this wind at your back that's pushing the plane forward and making it move much faster. By contrast, if you're flying from Boston to San Francisco, you might want to avoid the jet stream because you're flowing right into that fast moving ribbon of air and it will slow you down. So just like riding a bike, if you have a wind at your back, you're gonna go faster. And if you have a wind in your face, you're gonna go slower. Now, just a couple weeks ago, we talked about this, how a plane from Boston to London arrived in about five hours because of a really intense jet stream over the Atlantic. That's one of those cases where the pilot locked in on where the jet stream is flew with it and got to England a lot faster than he or she would have otherwise. There was also just a plane because of this coronavirus situation that flew from parts of French Polynesia all the way to Paris, nonstop. That's a long flight, but the pilot was able to fly with the jet stream to make it happen. And the reason they were flying that far, by the way, is because they didn't want to stop in the United States where people could be quarantined or what have you. So the jet stream is a big driver, not just in our weather, but also very helpful for pilots and anyone who flies. Coming up in our next lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of clouds.